At the beginning, I'll, I'm uh, going to discuss how to set up VCN and uh, create a compute instance in Zosia Cloud. Okay. So this is my uh, OCI Cloud console. Okay, I am having a, a pay as you go uh, account. You can see that means my current billing is zero because I have not incurred any cost. And I am in, in my um, USD's H1 region. Okay. So uh, here uh, at the beginning, I am going to show you how to uh, create a VCN like you know networking vcn virtual cloud network and later um, on this using this particular vcn i am going to uh, create a vm instance and uh, log into the vm instance as well so before doing that uh, if you come to the uh, left hand side that is burger burger sandwich uh, tab we just scroll down you come down there is something called account management and then identity so uh, here the, the users I logged in as a root. So there is a users you can create users. So first I will going to start from the creating a compartment. Compartment is a logical separations where you know you can use the compartments and you can create resource under that. So you can see once I can show you that uh, I am having three compartments. Uh, one is the root compartments, one is the database compartments, one is the manage compartments. So creating compartment is very easy. Like you create compartments, you game. You put the compartment name say whatever test one then put the descriptions for database creations and where you want to create the compartment you can put under root you can put under database under a compartment as well and you can put the tag name space i am not going to create it because it's already done the second thing is that uh, i'll again i'll click to this burger sandwich menu i'll go to the networking and then go to the overview So in the overview sections, uh, you can see that how to create a VCN internet connectivity, how to uh, create, you can have a different type of, uh, uh, you can read the th document, how to create and all these things. I just want to show you here. So I'll uh, click networking and click virtual cloud networks. You can see that I'm already having the two VCN, one is uh, VCN2 and one is my VCN. But I will be showing you, I will be starting from the scratch and I will show you how to create a VCN in OCI Cloud. So I first click the create VCN. Here it is asking for the name. I will put as a uh, database VCN. Okay. And uh, create a compartment. I will put the compartment as a database. You can choose any compartment. You can choose root, but it's not recommended. I will put as a database. And there is a CIDR rod, uh, CIDR block. So uh, VCN is a, a separate uh, cloud. Uh, uh, it's a VCN stand for virtual cloud network. So it is having the contiguous CIDR blocks. Uh, IPv4 is supported. IPv6 is only supported for the government cloud. So it's showing you the examples that you can choose these things. So let me choose 10.0.0.18. Okay and um, dns levels i am not putting anything so rest of the things i'll putting as a default there is something called advanced option you can put tag but i am not going to create anything so let's create vcn <coughs> my vcn uh, database vcn is already available now i am going to create a subnet so i'll uh, click create subnet uh, the first thing i have to choose a name i'll put as a, a database subnet one uh, if you remember that uh, the I have created the VCN under the compartment database, I'll choose the same compartment. And there is a uh, the next topic is the subnet type. There is a two type of subnets available. Uh, normally, subnets are uh, availability domain specific, which is uh, it's a you know in a region there are multiple available domains. Um, you if you can see that a region is a kind of a <clears throat> um, wide area, and the domains are specific areas kind of things. You know. Um, it's like you know, availability domain one, availability domain two, domain two, this kind of stuffs. Normally, three to three availability domains are minimum. And uh, there is another uh, subnet type is there. It's a regional subnet types, uh, which says that instance in the subnet can be created in any availability domain in the region. Useful for the high availability because uh, OCI normally maintains the high availability of these particular subnet types, so it is recommended. So I chose the regional. 
now I have to the next thing is the CIDR blocks now VCNs we have chosen this slash 18 10.0.0 slash 18 so we have to use uh, any kind of CIDR range uh, IP range available in between this particular CIDR so I'll choose slash 20 okay now the next thing is that I am not going to change anything because route table um, choose database I'll choose a uh, uh, default route table uh, next thing is the subnet access subnet access uh, there is a public subnet which is uh, uh, allowed public IP uh, to log into this particular access to the subnet uh, I'll be using the public subnet because I am going to use this uh, particular subnet for creating my um, uh, compute instance and where I will be logging uh, from my laptop okay the next thing is the DNS resolution is already checked I am not going to use the DNS levels um, the security list security list I'll be changing to the database I'm going to change the default security list okay um, tag I am not going to use so rest of the things are default I'm putting a clear subnet this steps I am going to show you another one subnet um, uh, and I want to uh, discuss few things uh, you know that uh, my uh, VCN is created with the CIDR blocks uh, slash 18 so if I want to know what is the range what is the how many uh, IP addresses is there there is a very good website here it's called ipaddressguide.com and uh, so it is very simple to understand so if I put the CIDR range as 18 and calculate so you can see that it, it says CIDR range net marks first IP is 10.0.0 and the last IP is 10.0.63.255 this is IP range now um, I al already having a create subnets uh, which is taking this the IP range available from the uh, VCN so it is having this CIDR block slash 20 so if I'll use another one and uh, and I'll put slash 20 I put another window for this particular website and I'll put slash 20 and calculate so you can see here it's taken the first IP of the CIDR 10.0.0 but is the last type it has taken 10.0.15.255 so if i'll create the subsequent um, subnet uh, for this vc and i have to use the ips which is not inside otherwise overlapping ips cannot be used for the creating the subnets okay so that means uh, if i'll create another one subnets and i'll put as a subnet 2 i'll change the i'll put the regional subnet okay if i'll put the citr blocks so if I'll put something around uh, 2.0.20, I'll put the invalid CDI because it is already in the range. You can see that already in the range. So I have to put something which is outside in the range. So what is outside? Can I put 10? No, because it's also inside the range. So I have to put something after 55. So let me put 16.0. 20 yes I can put that because this is outside this range it is 15.255 is the last one so I can put the 16 okay that's great so now rest of the things are you know it depends on whatever the my thing um, I use the default security list but but the purpose of showing these things the how to calculate the CIDI range and uh, how to calculate if I have I can have a multiple uh, you know vision on that and I have to use that uh, um, accordingly uh, I'll be showing you another vis another subnets uh, how to create the another subnets inside that and I'll show you the again okay so this time I have created 10.0.16.20 okay I'll change here 10.16.20 so this is the IP address is used the last IP is a 10.0.31 so if I'll create another one, say I'll choose another one, just for the sake of showing you, and uh, I can put 10 dot 0 dot. What is the last one? 31. So I'll use from the 32. 32 to 0, 20. Yes, it's valid. Um, so I can create multiple subnets inside a uh, VCN. 
only the thing is that I have to put non overlapping IP address contiguous IP range so that's great let us see the subnets inside this VPN VCN now you can see that what are the components already created in the VCN there is a uh, three subnets one CIDR blocks one route table zero internet gateways um, zero network security groups one security list that is default DSCP option G one local peering gateway is zero net gateway is zero service gateway is zero I am not going to use any other gateways but internet gateways definitely will be required for uh, connecting to the internet and the, uh, uh, from the connecting to the instance so I'll be clicking these things and create the internet gateway I'll, I can put like you know uh, my fast internet gateway whatever the name and uh, creating compartments okay and then create internet gateway good now i'll go to the route table because i have to create the route for these things and i'll choose the default route table for the default route tables uh, there is an option called add route add route rules okay so target type is uh, you can see the defined thing target types my for my thing it is the internet gateway uh, destination CIDR blocks I'll uh, you can choose anything but you know uh, for me is a test systems it is a training uh, stations I am choosing this 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0 uh, by 0 that means from everywhere and uh, change compartment okay and descriptions okay optional add route rules well guys this part of the video uh, I'll going to discuss about uh, private subnet and um, uh, what is the OCI best practices to dealing with the private subnets okay uh, you if you can see that until now um, we have done with this VCN okay and we created the three subnets uh, all are uh, public subnets okay and um, we also created we have not created any kind of you know uh, uh, non-default route tables or non-default security list we have only created an internet gateway so if i go for a picture if you see this is one of our uh, public subnet or suppose this is our public subnets and we have created one internet gateway okay and all the traffics are moving to using this internet gateway to the uh, uh, outside world so that for this instance if i have an instance and if it is there in the public subnet so the traffic can flow to the internet but the next things we are going to create a private subnet and we will also discuss uh, what is the best practices here okay before you know uh, the before creating a public subnet uh, private subnet here in this for this vc and i just want to discuss uh, this is not a good practice to using this uh, default route table of default security list i used last time but whenever you are having a both the private and public subnet you should separate the route tables and the uh, security list so since before uh, creating a uh, private subnet i want to create a both a security list and a route table so i'll click the security list i'll create a security list and it will be private security list okay so i'll discuss about the ingress and uh, egress rule later so now i'll just uh, rest of the things will be default I'll last I click the create security list okay so it's created next things um, I'll go to the route table you can see only one default route table is there for the VCN I'll create an, another route table I'll say uh, private route table route table okay uh, compartment database uh, no tagging create okay the next thing is that now I'll go to the subnet um, my last subnet was uh, having this uh, IP CID range of 10.0.32.0.20 so if I'll go my website and I'll click um, the IP range the first IP range is 10.0.32.0 and the last one is 10.0.47.255 so I will be using from 48 for creation of my subnet so I will go to VCN 
go to this create subnet I'll mention this as a private subnet okay uh, domain specific it's okay I can choose a domain if I want say I'll shoot one CIDI range I'll be using from 48 in my previous video I have discussed why I've done that what is the logic behind that so route table I'll be using this private route table and it is a private subnet uh, for DSCP options okay no I am not using things here for the security list also I'll be using my private security list and create subnet so it might take few seconds or uh, less than a minute I believe to create okay it's created it's available now now uh, the let's discuss about the security list if i go to the picture now this is my private subnet it is having a private subnet ip so say uh, the IP is there for private subnet is this is the IP okay now the thing is that this security if I go for the security list uh, which is the my private subnet is using I'll go to the security list private security list you can see there is no rules okay there is no rule so anyway traffic cannot flow anyway because there is no rules ingress rules are kind of a security list like a virtual firewall so I'll add security list now the first thing is that uh, it's having that whether you want a stateless or stateful now if you know what is the stateless or stateful I just want to discuss from the Oracle website itself stateless what is stateful stateful it's mentioned is very clearly make marking a security rules as stateful indicates that if you want to use connection tracking for any traffic that matches the rule that means whenever the instant receives traffic matching the stateful ingress rules the response is tracked and automatically allowed back that means if you got a uh, host one instance a and host b whatever so suppose um, at any port if the uh, port 80 okay there is a traffic is allowed incoming traffic is allowed and it is a stateful so the response is automatically allowed so you don't have to put a another entry for the uh, you know if the ingress is allowed egress you don't have to put it is automatically allowed that means it is a stateful and stateless is opposite if you have a stateless even though you are having a allowed port 80 uh, in instance a from host p it doesn't mean that response is allowed it will you have to separate egress rule for response to be allowed uh, for, to send that means what is said marking a security rule as stateless indicates that you do not want to use connection tracking for any traffic that matches the rule that means even the connection tracking you won't get the you won't get any kind of response and if you want a response you have to have a separate egress rule only ingress rule won't send that uh, you know response as it is says sent for the stateful rules okay so i'll put as a stateful is okay the cidr now this is from my private um, uh, subnet so private if it is private subnet that means the it cannot be it doesn't it cannot be accessed from a from a public only the thing is that uh, uh, if i go to the picture that means if I am from the internet side, I cannot directly go here. I cannot directly go here. I cannot go. One thing is possible thing is there. Suppose if I will have a bastion host in the uh, public subnet. Suppose here bastion host. Okay. And there from here, I can directly I can log in because they are in the same VPC level okay so I cannot direct this is the purpose the purpose is there in this kind of setup suppose the normally we will put web server here uh, which is having a direct um, uh, internet connection from internet traffic can go to the web server and from the web server 
and here the in pub, uh, private subnet there is a db server so from web servers only it is allowed so um, ideally uh, the particular subnet range or uh, if you have a separate side you can put the entire uh, database I CIDR. So that means only the CIDRs within this VCN can access. Now protocol is TCP. You can have anything. All protocols. Uh, you can have SSH. Suppose I'll put SSH um, uh, 22, and uh, you can put the you know uh, port range one, destination port range. If I also can uh, put all port, whatever all port. Okay, so all protocols. that's kind of things so you can choose you can choose whatever way you want so so now I'll go back my VCN so what will happen now if I go to the picture sorry if I go to the picture that means uh, if I have a basin host, in my next video I will show you, I will create a two uh, separate uh, compute instance, one is uh, public uh, subnet, one is private subnet, I will discuss the things, also I will explain what is NAT, because suppose from here, you do not have any connections to the internet gateway, so you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot go to the outside uh, internet world, say google.com or something, anything, you cannot go really outside, so what you need, you need a NAT maybe in my next video I will discuss about NAT but uh, I believe you understood that uh, what is the purpose of the private subnet public subnets and what is the role of uh, uh, security list and the route tables and so here the in my earlier video we discussed about the default route tables here also I shown that default route table is not a good practice in the real world scenario you should have a non default route tables uh, for your subnets okay um, so I believe you understood the things. In my next video, I will go create a compute instance. Also, I will discuss uh, uh, how to create a compute instance in the uh, both the private subnet and public subnet. And what is the difference? How you can use the internet gateway uh, for the public subnet and how you can use a NAT gateway uh, to access the traffic, uh, access the internet from a uh, private subnet. Okay, thank you.